Hi, this is Jeff Heen. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to take a look at transformers. We're going to see them at a very high level and look at the encoder, the decoder, and the various components that make up a transformer. Transformers can certainly be used for time series. Natural language processing is generally taught, thought of as time series because the words, the characters are occurring in a specific order. So we will see in this example how to translate a sentence from Spanish to English or from English to Spanish in this case, but you would train another one to go the other direction. There are a number of different types of neural networks that you'll see here. So you could deal with vector to sequence. Vector to sequence is typically used for image capturing. So you would give it some sort of a vector, which would be the image that you're looking at, and it would output a sequence, which would be the words describing what the image actually is. A sequence to vector is sentiment analysis. That's usually where you give it a sentence and you want some sort of a vector coming back saying if it's a positive or negative sentence, you can train it for really anything you want to. It doesn't necessarily have to be sentiment. Sequence to sequence is often used in language translation. So we're going to have a sequence coming in, a sequence coming out, and they're going to be sentences in various languages. So let's look at a example of transformers at a high level. In keeping with the idea of this course being applications, we won't go deep into how you would actually implement one of these. We will look at the, the flow going through these and we'll go deeper than just this diagram, but I think this diagram that I put together really gives you a high level view of what's going into the network and what's coming out. So here we have a sentence. It says start, so that's a token that is defined. There's an ending token as well. Start, the cat likes milk. That's the English sentence. That goes into the transformer. This whole thing is the transformer. The encoder is what is going to take this sentence, and this is a sequence, variable length. There, it's going right into an attention unit in here, so it's not like you have to have a fixed length and pad it or something like that. You can pass in really any length within reason there. The encoder, and there can be multiple encoders, the paper that implemented this had a stack of six encoders. So we could certainly have that if we wanted to. There's also multiple heads inside of the attention units to further allow analysis. But what this encoder is really doing is taking the cat likes milk and turning it into a hidden state that is basically a tensor that's going to ultimately go to the decoder. So the you could use just the encoder part, and in the next part we will do this to predict time series, but it's going into the decoder, and then the decoder takes initially just a start token, so you, you really just have to run this part once, and now you've got this numeric value that's coming in that is a bunch of key value pairs, we'll see that in a moment, that really represent the information. Then we put in the start token. We don't put in the entire thing yet, it, it masks it. But we start just with the start token, pass that into the decoder. We pass the hidden state and we calculate this just once for the sentence being translated. We pass the hidden state and the start token. And that's going to return a list of probabilities for all of the words that it knows this could be 7,000, this could be 50,000, just depending on how large of a vocabulary you have in there. And in this case, the word that comes out would probably be L. So L, gato, le, it's starting to translate it into Spanish, and it builds it word by word. You start just with star, start, it returns le, I'm sorry, it would actually return L the first time, then gato, so if you pass this whole sequence in, it would return lay, because that is the next word in this translated sentence. 
So that's the high level view of this. And this shows you what the data is looking like. You send the entire sentence in, get a hidden state, and then you just build it up token by token by token. You can think of these as words, but really they're tokens. That way you might have common prefixes and suffixes as different, different tokens into there that allow learning at the subword level. You, so you have the stem of the word and then you have suffixes and prefixes. Now looking at this just a little bit deeper, we're going to have several hyperparameters. The number of layers, the, D, the dimensions of the model. This is those tokens coming in, you're going to run them into an embedding. So each token, each word, usually words, sometimes parts of words, will be mapped to a high dimensional 128, in this case, numeric vector, so that similar words are placed closer to each other. We're not going to transfer in a word to vec or a glove or something like that. We'll actually train it for the 128 values that we have there. DFF is for certain dense feed forward neural networks, how many units we have. We'll see where they're at in a moment and the number of heads in the attention units. So this is using attention, which takes the sentence and really looks at the word positions and allows the neural network to know to focus on which parts of it that it actually needs. And this gives very amazing natural language processing results. And number of heads, that's just how many, uh, how many importance grids you want to have inside of the attention matrix. If you add too many of these, it bogs down the, the process and leads to overfitting. If you don't have enough, it won't learn the richness that you're going to really need for the translation. So it's, it's another hyperparameter to tune. Dropout, we've seen dropout already. This is a regularization technique. And this just means that 10% of the neural network's neurons are going to be dropped out as it's training per it epoch. So looking inside the transformer, there's a number of things that we're dealing with. Embeddings, positional encoding, attention and self-attention, residual connections, and so on. This is the diagram from the paper. This is a lot more low level than what I showed you, but let me jump into this and just show you the major parts of it and how they fit together. You'll notice right off the bat, it's, it's similar. This is the encoder, this is the decoder. So you're gonna pass in that input sentence that you are going to translate into Spanish, the English sentence. Since this is a ragged sequence that's going in, so each sequence does not have to be of the same length for the batch it does, but each individual one does not. It is going into not any sort of recurrent neural network. So each word has a position, but they're essentially inputs into these networks. So the input, the order of the inputs doesn't really matter when you're putting them in this way. If you map something to input one or input two, and it's not a sequence, the position doesn't matter. So that's why in addition to these embeddings, so the high dimension, the 128 number vector that represents each word, we're also adding to it a positional encoding. And this is a sine and cosine wave. We're looking at the slopes at each, each point for the position. So that has to be encoded into those input vectors. Otherwise, the neural network really would not understand any concept of position, and that would greatly weaken its ability to predict. When you go into the encoder, now you have the attention unit. You have several things going on here. You have the attention unit, the multi-head attention. You have the residual connections. These are skip layer connections, so the input coming in the matrix of these, these encodings, embeddings, come in and go directly past the attention unit into the normalization level, doing batch encoding, batch normalization. That's helping to keep all these things in the same range that the neural network is going to like. And then the whole thing is passed into the neural network. You can see there's three hooks here going in those are the keys, the values, and the query. 
If all three of them are the same, it's self-attention. So it's essentially taking this sentence and making a attention grid of it and calculating how important those words are relative to each other. I have a link to where Google did a great tutorial where you build this whole thing from scratch. So if you want to see the low-level details of what is truly going on inside of that attention unit, I, I suggest you take a look at that. It, it will show you. Now, going into the next module in this course, we're going to use Hugging Face and we're going to transfer in things like BERT and use those already pre-trained to either adjust or to make use of these kind of things already built. So we're focusing more on applying and then building this from scratch. So it goes through the attention unit and then it hits the just a normal feed forward network. Now while this says attention is all you need, I think what they mean by all you need is you don't need the convolution and the LSTM networks. Otherwise they're going to pretty much be saying attention, embeddings, positional encoding, attention and self-attention, and residual connections are all you need. But it's not as catchy of a, of a paper title. And also dense layers, because we have those here. So this whole thing takes the sentence and creates a series of keys and values that represent all of the knowledge harvested from the cat likes milk or whatever sentence we're trying to translate. That only has to be done once. This part you have to call for every word as you slowly build up that sentence. So as you can see here, these two arrows, those are the keys and the values, that's the information extracted. And then this part down here, another self-attention network, is you can think of this part up here is almost the encoder decoder because it's decoding what the what the encoder sent in this bottom part is taking the what we built of the sentence so far so the start token initially then then more and more as it goes and it's taking those and encoding that into almost like a hidden unit and then these all go together and it produces the prediction of the probability for the next word and then the next word is added to it and the whole process repeats until this thing outputs a ending token saying to stop it. Now these nx's on both sides this means that these encoding and decoding layers can be stacked so the shape of this input going into it and this output going into out of it is exactly the same so you can add more and more of these together. Six is the number of layers in both the encoder and decoder that the paper made use of. Thank you for watching this video, and if you found this information useful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, give the video a like, so that you won't miss any upcoming videos in this course.